to beginner's gentle yoga. You will simply need a mat or a blanket or a towel, a quiet, uninterrupted space, and a present mind. We will begin in an easy seat or sukhasana. Sukhasana can also mean sweet seat. So we want to make sure whatever position your legs are in is the most comfortable for you. Often for many people that's cross-legged, maybe it's your typical crisscross applesauce, or maybe trying for placing one heel in front of the other, kind of feeling your knees pushing downwards towards the earth. Or we may choose to sit in a hero's pose, sitting on the heels. Maybe legs are bent out in front of you. Whatever serves you best today. Whichever seat you are in, let's begin to build the spine. So maybe we remove a little bit of the flesh from underneath the glutes. We feel our sacrum tilted back just a bit, the core ever so slightly engaged, building up through the middle back. Stacking that middle back right over the sacrum. We shrug our shoulders up to the ears on an inhale and we'll relax them down on an exhale. We feel the lower neck right on top of the sacrum the top of the head, the crown, falls in line with the neck, reaching proud towards the sky. And we can even tuck the chin just a bit to allow the cervical spine to reach its tallest height. So we feel one long line of energy from the bottom of the spine all the way out through the crown of the head. Our hands are relaxed on the lap. Let's check and make sure that there's no clenching or gripping. The palms can lay down or up whichever serves you. We'll take the palms out to either side of us and take three cleansing breaths. Open mouth exhales. So inhaling, sweeping the arms out and up, maybe gazing up at the sky and ha, ah, exhaling hands down to heart center. Two more times. <sighs> Letting the hands fall back onto the lap. Building that long, tall spine again. I invite you to close your eyes or take a downcast gaze. I'll be reading from a book by Tao Porshan Lynch. Tuning into our breath. Knowing that it is the breath and the connection of the breath with movement that make this 
yoga. Not a workout, not a stretch, but a union, a union of yourself with the eternal energy. Surrender your whole being to the silence which seems to creep over the earth and listen suddenly to the rhythm of stillness. You can experience the vibrations of energy as you surrender deeper and deeper into the earth, fully supporting your seat. Witness the belly and pelvis rise and fall with your breath. Become the breath. The fire of creation of the solar plexus in the abdomen seems to glow like the setting sun. Your breath becomes deep yet simple like a cloud hanging in space. The mind soft seems to merge within that space. Listen to the pulse beat of the earth. Become one with your heart. Be the earth. Glide on the sound of your breath. Like a seagull glides and seems to float over the ocean. Your breath seems to have wings as you become one with your inner self. Allow the skin of your face and the forehead to relax. Relax the corners of your mouth. Swallow. Soften the tongue. And gently your breath is drawn through the subtle tissues of the body. Sense the broadness of your being as your entire body appears to melt into space. The waves of your breath seem to float into oneness with the eternal energy. And know that you are that energy. The universal oneness, God, that lives within us all. Gently begin to blink open the windows of the eyes. Allowing yourself to be fully present in this moment. If your legs are crossed, let's go ahead and switch out the cross, placing the opposite leg in front of the other. We'll place the hands at the sides and on an inhale, sweeping them out and up. Then we'll exhale, leaning over to your right side, keeping the right sit bone rooted into the earth. Maybe the gaze comes upward, the heart reaching towards the sky, feeling the stretch in the left side body. On our inhales, the chest broadens. And on the exhales, we sink deeper towards the right. On our 
next inhale, coming back to center and taking that shape to the other side, keeping the right hip bone into the earth. Maybe the heart reaches towards the sky, chest lifts. And on our inhales, we become taller. And on our exhales, we stretch deeper. On our next inhale, taking the arms back overhead, we'll exhale them, clasping the hands behind the head, taking a moment to let those shoulders fall away from the ears. Just begin to press the elbows behind you. Not never taking this too far, just feeling that stretch in that space between the shoulder and head. Releasing any tension in the face, returning to the breath. One more breath here. And on our next inhale, Taking those clasp hands up to the sky, the pinkies are reaching towards the back of the room. The arms can be as bent as needed here to make sure that those shoulders are not shrugged up. On your next exhale, let the arms release down to the sides. We'll tense our fingertips on either side of us and allow the chin to fall to the chest. On an inhale, we'll take the chin over to the right shoulder, exhaling through center, inhale, over to the left shoulder. Exhaling down. Inhale, left, right shoulder. Exhale, center. Inhale, left shoulder. Continuing to paint these half moons on the chest, or maybe if it is safe for you, Allowing the head to take full circle. Inhaling on the up and exhaling on the down. If you took those head circles, being sure to take them in the other direction. all meet with our head and center. On an inhale, we'll reach the arms out and up and exhale, fold over that left knee. The ribs come in line with the right, with the left thigh. On our inhales, the heart reaches past the knee. And on our exhales, we fold even deeper. 
keeping that right sit bone grounded into the earth. Next inhale, slowly walk yourself back up. We'll again switch out the cross of the legs, inhaling, sweeping the arms up, and exhaling, folding the upper body over the right leg. Inhaling, heart reaches past the knee. And exhaling, folding down. On our next inhale, walking yourself all the way back up. We'll take the legs out in front of us, giving them a little shake. And switching your body on your mat to the legs out long in front of you. Preparing for our Dandasana or Staff Pose. So again, taking the flesh out from underneath the seat, building that long straight spine, Middle back over sacrum, shoulders over hips, ears over shoulders. We'll place the hands at the sides, palms down, not placing any pressure into earth, into the earth, just lightly allowing them to rest. And we begin to feel the toes and feet flex towards the face. We press the thigh bones into the earth, pressing the shins into the earth, and the heels are almost reaching out past the top of the mat. The legs can be as bent as needed here to allow for that spine to remain tall and the feet to remain flexed. So feel free to play with it as much as you'd like. And we'll take a few breaths here. Our feet are also not together, but apart just a bit. The heels perfectly in line with our hips. Shrugging the shoulders up and back, and we'll breathe. Feeling the breath coming into the belly, up the ribs, and then the chest. And as we exhale, releasing it out, chest, ribs, belly empties. On our next inhale, sweeping the arms out and up, we'll exhale, folding over the legs, but not fully, just about halfway, feeling more the energy of the fingertips and the heart trying to reach past the toes. And we'll take some movement here. So inhaling, reaching forward, and exhaling, folding over the legs. Inhaling, heart past the front of the mat. Exhaling, nose to knees. Three more times. When 
you take your final exhale, allow yourself to rest in this forward fold. No need to aim for any specific place of holding on to your legs. but simply allowing yourself to stay wherever you feel the stretch in the lower back, in the middle back, and keeping those feet engaged to continue to stretch the hamstrings. On your next inhale, tiptoeing the hands back up to the seat, taking them behind you, fingertips facing forward, bending the knees, and we'll take a nice windshield wiper here. Inhaling, allowing the knees to fall to the right, looking over the left shoulder. Exhaling back to center. Inhaling, letting the knees fall, looking over the right. Exhaling to center. Continuing these windshield wipers at your own pace. And of course, taking any other movements that might help you release from our staff pose, the Dandasana. Coming back to center, we'll take our butterfly pose or baddha konasana so our the bottom of our feet come together in front of us so the feet can be very far and this will allow for a deeper stretch in the legs or the feet can come close to us allowing for a deeper stretch in the heels or in the hips Playing with this again, seeing whichever placement serves you best. And for a moment, we'll simply sit in this position, building that tall spine, maybe shrugging the shoulders up and down, crown tall. Maybe the palms are up. Maybe even they're on the knees, just pressing the knees ever so gently a little bit further down towards the earth. Maybe closing the eyes, inhaling, and exhaling. And on our next inhale, we'll go ahead and Fold over those legs, feeling that same action as we did in staff pose, the heart reaching past the feet and then folding the nose towards the earth. Taking a moment to check in on the face. Are we clenching anything? Have thought lines developed. One more breath here. And on our next inhale, walking ourselves all the way back up, taking the knees in together, we'll swing them around and come into a kneeling position. If you're on a hard floor, feeling free to grab a blanket for underneath the knees, it might serve you very well. I typically always use one myself, but I'm at home and it's carpeted. We'll place the hands at the lower back, kind of right below your kidneys. So your fingertips are just touching the tops of the glutes. 
we feel our elbows coming towards each other. Shoulders fall away from ears. And if we feel a stretch here, we stay right here. But if not, maybe we begin to take a slide back bend, pushing the hips forward and allowing the heart to reach up. Being careful with the neck, only letting it fall. If your neck is very healthy. One more breath here. Lifting all the way back up. Sitting down on the heels, letting your arms come out in front of you, maybe giving them a little shake. Staying in this kneeling position. We'll practice our eagle arms, so letting our eagle wings spread out wide to either side, then crossing the right arm over the left, taking the left hand to the right shoulder and right hand to the left shoulder, giving yourself a nice hug here, thanking yourself for taking the step to come to your mat. And maybe you stay here Maybe you begin to walk your fingertips further behind the back. Maybe that feels great. Or maybe you test out your eagle wings by bringing the elbows in front of the face and allowing the backs of the palms to meet. If you do take eagle arms, Allowing a push-pull action between the elbows and the backs of the shoulders. So your elbows are reaching forward and the shoulders reach back. Inhaling and exhaling. On our next inhale, releasing those wings from wherever you are. We'll point the fingers towards the face, then we'll take little circles forward and little circles back. Then spreading those wings again and taking the opposite arm on top, left arm on top of right. and allowing those hands to come to the shoulders, giving yourself that tight loving squeeze that you so deserve. And then maybe tiptoeing those fingers closer together, or maybe playing with your eagle. One more breath here. Exhaling those wings out, shaking the arms, maybe shaking the shoulders, letting the hands fall. Coming into our tabletop position. Again, a blanket under the knees is highly encouraged. We'll begin with a few cow-cat breaths. So inhaling to cow, we feel the tail lift, heart lift, gaze reaches up, 
find like a curved glass. Exhaling, gaze to the belly button, shoulders widen. Inhaling to cow, heart lifts, tail lifts, gaze lifts. Exhaling, gaze to spark to the belly, fine rounds, shoulders away from ears. Continuing this cow cat breath at your own pace and taking any other movements in this position that might feel good to you. I personally like to take angry cat, which is when we come into cat and then come onto our fingertips. Gives my shoulders just a little bit of a deeper stretch. And sometimes I'll kind of push my hips back to the heels and come back up again. No need to perfectly follow me. Remembering that your body is your first teacher and I am simply a guide. We'll all meet back in center. Feeling that long straight spine from the sacrum through the crown of the head. Taking a look at our knees, are they right below our hips? Are the bottoms of the legs extending straight out at a 90 degree angle from the upper leg? Shoulders right above wrists. Fingers spread wide on the mat, knuckles pressing into the earth. On an inhale, taking the right foot back behind you, toes tucked, and we'll simply rock forward and back, waking up that right leg. Staying here, we're on an inhale, lifting that right leg up to where the heel and the hip are aligned. Engaging the lower belly here to keep your balance. We'll take a moment to roll the ankle out to the left. And then roll it to the right. Keeping this balance, or maybe the left arm comes out in front of us, palm facing in, the right toes flex towards the face, left shoulder remains locked into its socket. The gaze is about a few feet in front of us on the ground for balance. Take two more breaths here. And we'll exhale everything down, maybe shaking the hips from left to right. Coming back into our tabletop position, checking our alignment. On an inhale, left foot comes back behind you, tucking the left toes, and inhaling forward, exhaling back. Staying here in the hamstring stretch, or maybe that left heel comes in line with the left hip. 
Checking that those shoulders aren't reaching for the ears. Again, checking the face. Let it go of any tension. We'll roll out the left ankle to the left. Then roll it to the right. Meet it back in center. Staying here with the lower core engaged. Or maybe the right arm comes out in front of you. Palm facing inwards. One long line of energy from the fingertips through the left heel. On our next exhale, releasing everything down to the earth, shaking out those hips, and then allowing the hips to fall to the heels. Legs can be together or apart. Arms out in front for extended child's pose. Or back behind you if the shoulders need a break. The forehead comes to the earth. And we remember that our child's pose is always here for us throughout our practice. Today. And in any place and any future practice to come. Coming back to that smooth, soft breath. On our next inhale, rising back up to tabletop position, taking the hands maybe a foot in front of you, tucking the toes and reaching the hips towards the sky for Adho Mukha Shavasana, Downward Dog. Our feet, our hips distance apart. The heels do not have to reach the earth, but we do want to feel them reaching towards the earth. The inner thighs are pushing slightly outwards. The thigh bones reaching towards the sky. The elbow creases are reaching towards the front of the mat. The fingertips are spread wide. Knuckles pressing down. And the knees can be as bent as you need here. It is more important to have that long straight line from the crown of the head to the sacrum than to necessarily have the heels reach the earth or the legs be perfectly straight. Inhaling, feeling. The chest widen and exhaling, maybe the heels come a little bit closer to the earth. Engaging the core to protect the lower back. On our next inhale, as slowly as possible, tiptoe your feet all the way to the front of your mat. When you get there, allow yourself to fall into Uttanasana, forward fold. Again, legs as bent as needed here. Maybe taking opposite hands to opposite shoulders. Drawing little infinity symbols on the ground. Letting the 
the hands, fall. Again, knees as bent as needed. The feet, hips distance apart, which usually for most people, that's about two fists. So seeing if you can fit, fit both of your fists between the feet. And simply feeling the pull of gravity from the top of your head. Again, no need to have your hands in any certain place. Maybe they only reach the shins. Maybe they only reach the thighs. And that is just fine. On your next inhale, we'll take a halfway lift. Hands coming to the shins or the thighs, creating an L shape with the body. Shoulders away from ears and heart reaching forward. We'll exhale, coming back to that forward fold. And on our inhale, let's take a reverse swan dive, taking a slight bend in the knees. Flat back, taking the arms all the way out. Up to the sky, maybe a slight back bend, and exhaling the hands to heart center. We'll take a few half sun salutations similar to that sequence. So on our inhale, we sweep the arms out and up. Exhaling, swan diving down to the earth. Inhaling, halfway lift. L shape, exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, knees bent, rising all the way up. Exhaling, hands to heart center. Two more rounds. Inhaling, arms out and up. Exhaling, swan diving to the earth. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, reverse swan dive all the way up. And exhaling, hands to heart center. Inhaling, Urdhva Hasasana. Exhaling, down to Uttanasana. Inhaling, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Bending the knees, swan dive, inhaling to Urdhva Hasasana, and exhaling Samasthi to you. Taking a moment in this standing position, hands at the heart, the knuckles resting lightly, lightly on the sternum. Come back to your breath. Releasing any tension from the face, shoulders, and anywhere else. Maybe closing the eyes. There's a slight bend in the knees. Pelvis is tucked. This is our Tadasana pose, our mountain pose just with the change of our hands being in prayer. Fluttering the eyes open, we'll start the same way, inhaling, rising all the way up, exhaling, swan diving off our mountain, inhaling, halfway lift, and exhale, taking the right foot to the back of the mat, toes tucked, and allowing the knee to fall to the earth. Untucking the right toes, coming into our low lunge, Anjaneyasana. We might not be able to reach our hands to the earth, and that is just fine. Maybe we have to take the hand the knee or to the thigh, but we want to feel the action of the heart reaching forward, the left hip pulls back, 
and the right hip pulls forward. If you do not feel anything here, maybe widening your stance, bringing your left foot forward or your right leg back. Always checking that our knee is never past the ankle. So we don't want this. We want this. And we can even have this as long as that's still creating a stretch in the right hip. So again, hands down or hands resting on the left thigh. We'll take a little bit of movement here to come into a monkey stretch. So hands down or on the thighs, inhaling forward, and we'll exhale, bringing the hips back and flexing those left toes towards the face. Inhaling, coming forward, exhaling, toes towards the face. Inhaling forward, Exhale, toes towards the face, and then we'll stay here, allowing the upper body to fall over that left leg. Again, knee bent as much as needed here, as long as we are feeling a stretch in that left hand. Heart reaches towards the toes on the inhales, and we fold on the exhale. On our next inhale, coming back into that low lunge, we'll take our left knee to meet our right in the back, and then we'll simply bring the right knee forward, tucking the left toes, coming into a high lunge for just a moment, just walking that left foot as far back as we can, and then letting the left knee fall, left toes untuck, and we're in our Anjaneyasana on the other side, low lunge. Heart reaching past the knee. Maybe take a little smile to the face. It can always be helpful. It's amazing how even a forced smile can make us feel so much joy. Again, hands on the thighs, just fine. Checking that knee and ankle lineup. On an inhale, heart reaches forward, exhaling, half monkey pose, toes towards the face, hips back. Inhaling, low lunge, exhaling, half monkey. Staying here. In our Ardha Hanumanasana. Heel reaching towards the front of the mat. We'll take the heart as far forward as we can, right knee bent if needed, and then we'll fold over that right leg. Inhaling back to the lunge, hands frame the front foot, taking the right leg to meet the left, pressing all four corners of the palms and all the fingers into the earth, tucking the toes, lifting the hips to downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Shavasana. Maybe the heels can reach a little bit closer to the earth. Maybe the tail reaches even higher to the sky. And on our next 
next inhale again, taking that very slow walk all the way to the top of the mat. Once we're there, holding into Uttanasana, forward fold once more. Maybe the crown gets a little bit closer to the earth. We'll inhale, taking a halfway lift, L shape. Exhaling, forward fold. Then we'll inhale, reverse swan dive, rising all the way up. And exhaling, hands to heart center. We'll practice some of our Virabhadrasanas or warrior poses. We'll take the right foot towards the back of the mat, keeping the feet about hips distance apart. The right foot comes to a 45 degree angle, left toes facing forward, and we'll bend into that left knee. We feel that same action as the lunge of that right hip coming forward, left hip reaching back. Checking that knee to ankle alignment, knee never past the ankle. And then we'll reach the arms up overhead. Vira Bhajasana one, warrior one. Feeling the heart reaching out and up. Shoulders relaxed, energy through the fingertips, but the arms don't have to be straight. Breathing here. And straightening out that front leg, bringing the hands back to center. We're simply going to pivot, turning towards your right to come into our warrior on the other side. We may have to tiptoe our right foot towards the right side a little bit so that our feet are back into that hip swift distance. The left foot is on that 45 degree angle. The right toes face forward. Placing the hands on the hips so that we can really feel that action of the right hip back, left foot, left hip forward. And we'll bend into that front leg. And as you are ready, reaching the hands up to the sky heart out and up. Allowing the hands to come back to center, pivoting around back towards the front of the mat, right foot meets the left, We'll take a moment to do a little balancing. So letting the legs come together. There's kind of a zipper from the inside of the ankles all the way up to the thighs. Relaxing the shoulders down the back, palms facing forward. Choosing a drishti or a non-moving focal point, something to keep your eyes on that does not move again. Could be a spot on the wall, a picture in the room. The knees are slightly bent. We'll lift our heels off the earth and slowly lower the hips towards the heels. Once we get there, staying here, feeling that Nice stretch in the feet. And then we'll simply place one hand in forward, one hand in back, and let ourselves fall all the way down to the earth, bringing the knees into the chest, giving them a tight, loving squeeze, maybe rocking from left to right. Letting the left foot fall towards the bottom of the earth. 
Bringing that right knee as close into the chest as possible. The left foot does not need to be flexed, it can be loose. And then we'll let the right foot come onto the left thigh, taking the arms out in a T shape. And we'll let the right knee fall over the left side of the body for a supine twist. Keeping the right shoulder rooted down. Getting to feel your heart rate slow. On your next inhale, coming back to center. Right foot meets the left at the bottom of the mat. Recentering your hips if they got a little off balance. Then taking the left leg into the chest, giving it a tight squeeze, pulling it in as far as it can go. And then left foot falls over the right thigh, arms to a T, and allowing that left leg to fall over to the right. Left shoulder remains rooted, and maybe the gaze comes over the left shoulder. next inhale, coming back to center, letting the legs fall towards the back of the mat, and coming into our Shavasana, our final rest, spreading out the length of the body so that nothing is crushed, the legs coming as wide as you would like, Maybe rocking them back and forth. Maybe giving them a little shake to make sure they're completely relaxed. Our Shavasana or final rest is exactly that. There is nothing to do here but to simply allow the benefits of our practice to sink into the body. The palms face up, no clenching in the fingers or the toes, checking the brows, letting go of any purposeful breathing and just allowing the breath to flow naturally. Tongue falling away from the roof of the mouth Shoulders away from ears. We'll take one big inhale together and then sighing exhale. Ah. And one more time. Ah. Allow yourself to stay here in the present moment, letting 
go of anything that might happen in the future or that did happen in the past. Allowing your body, mind, and spirit to fully rest. Nothing to do but to be. To this space by taking small movements to small places, wiggling the fingers and toes, taking the head from left to right. Maybe shaking out those legs again then bringing them back into the chest for a tight loving squeeze, maybe taking the forehead up to the knees, coming into a little ball, then releasing down, right arm comes up, and we let the knees fall to the right, coming into a fetal position. Head rests on the arm. We come into the fetal position at the end of yoga to symbolize a rebirth. The opportunity to leave this practice a different person than the one who began an hour ago. On your next inhale, pushing yourself back up to that easy seat where we started our practice. Shrugging the shoulders up to the ears and down. Hands fall loosely on the lap. And I invite you to close the eyes, let the chin fall to the chest. Keeping the eyes closed, sweeping the arms out and up and bringing them down to heart center in gratitude. Bowing the head. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. And may you be surrounded by your inner being of light and truth. I thank you so much for practicing with me today. Namaste.